Hello, and welcome to PG Music's video tutorial on mixing with Powertrax Pro Audio. This is the first part of two tutorials dealing with the mixer feature of Powertrax Pro Audio, and we'll cover the mixer window, features, and MIDI. The second tutorial will deal with the audio aspects of the mixer window, and will touch on use of the DX Effects plugins. These two videos together will demonstrate the mixing process needed to create a WAV file suitable for burning to a CD. In this video we will first do an overview of the mixer and discuss MIDI and mixing. Mixing is usually considered the final step in a song creation process before the final master can be created. However, doing things beforehand in the MIDI format will help to ease the flow of mixing in your audio. I've used the Melodist feature of PG Music's Band in a Box to create a song, Glory Road. We'll use this song as our demonstration tool. As you can see, I've already saved it as a MIDI file and imported it into Powertrax Pro Audio. If we listen to the song, you'll notice that some parts are too loud in relationship to others. We want to fix this, and to do that we'll use the features of the mixture window. At the bottom of the screen, you'll be able to see the mixer window. Right now, it's minimized. We can restore the mixer window by clicking on the Restore button or the Maximize button. We can also go to the Windows menu and select Mixer, or we can use the keystroke Control and the number 8. In this particular case, we'll just use the Maximize button. The mixer is made up of channel strips for each of the 48 tracks available in Powertrax Pro Audio. As you can see here, there are only 16 tracks being shown. This drop down menu will allow you to access additional tracks 17 through 32 and 33 through 48. Varying screen resolutions will present different numbers of channel strips shown on your screen. So, by using a larger screen resolution, you will display more channel strips. Next to the drop down menus is the default button. This button, when pressed, will reset the mixer to its default settings. If your mix sounds really bad and you want to start over from the beginning, press the default button. Next to the default button is the tuning button. This button, when pressed, will send an A note to all of your synthesizers. This will allow you to tune your synthesizers to an acoustic instrument. If you don't quite get back to the zero position, is not something to worry about. Simply use your mouse and right click over the tuning button. A dialog box will open showing you how far off you are. Simply put a zero and press enter or OK and the tuning knob will return to its zero detent position. The next two buttons will allow you to control additional programs from within Powertrax Pro Audio. The button currently with DLL will select the program to be controlled from a list. The larger button to the left of it will actually open the program. Available programs are controls for the Roland GS and SC synthesizer modules, the drums window, guitar tuner, and others. For instance, by pressing the smaller button, the selection window will open, and I can select the drums program. Press OK. And note that the larger button now says drums. By pressing this, the drums window will open. The next button is the Record Mixer Moves button. 
This button, when pressed, will record the moves for a selected channel strip. This includes volume, slider, and pan, and for MIDI channels, reverb and chorus. If you have an audio track, it will also record the AUX1 and AUX2 send levels. The Record Mixer Moves button will only record on the selected track, and it is not recommended that you try to record mixer moves for multiple tracks at one time. The next two buttons are the Delete and Insert buttons. Pressing the Delete button will remove all mixer settings for the selected track. Use this if you don't like the mixer moves for that track. It removes all mixer settings for that selected track. So if you've made a mistake on a mixer move at the end of the song, using the delete button will remove the mixer moves on that track for the whole song. Be careful using it. The insert button will insert at the present song location a snapshot of the mixer settings for the entire song. All tracks with data on them, MIDI or audio, and their associated mixer channel strips will be saved. I find this button very useful for the beginning of the song where I have everything where I want it to start the song. I move the song position pointer to the beginning of the song and press the insert button. Above the bottom row of buttons are the volume sliders. These are also called faders. By moving them up and down, you can control the volume for that particular track. Directly above the faders, for the MIDI tracks only, is the patch number box. This tells you the patch number for that particular channel strip. Above the patch number boxes are the pan control knobs. These allow you to pan the signal left or right. They are the balance controls of the mixer. Above the pan controls for the MIDI tracks are the reverb and chorus controls. These knobs will send a MIDI common controller message to the synthesizer varying the level of reverb and chorus the synth will add to that channel. Most current synthesizers will respond to this setting, however some older ones may not. If this were an audio channel, the chorus and reverb knobs are replaced with the AUX1 and AUX2 send knobs. These control the amount of the signal being sent to the AUX1 and AUX2 effects chain. The AUX1 and AUX2 effects chains are in parallel with the main signal chain. Also, for the audio only channels, Above the AUX1 and AUX2 are the FX buttons. Pressing these will open the DirectX FX box. We'll cover this more when we get into the second part of this tutorial. Note that as you move your mouse across the channel strips, the main title bar, or in a restored window, the title bar of the mixture window, will show the track that you're working on. This is a double check to make sure that you're actually working on the track that you want to be working on. Finally, on the right hand side of the mixer is the master section. This has the master fader, the master pan, and the master reverb and chorus send levels. This concludes the overview of the mixer. Let's go ahead and start on our project. The goal of this project, again, is to create a WAV file suitable for burning to CD from a MIDI file. We have our MIDI file, but it's obvious, if we listen to it, that some parts are louder than others and that it's not well mixed together.
processing can be done either in the MIDI format or in an audio format. When we go to create our audio tracks, having done some pre-mixing in MIDI will later on help us in achieving the desired audio sound we want without too much more mixing. The key is to do as little as possible to change the audio sound unless you have a specific need to do that. So, mixing in the MIDI format is a good way to get the basics of the final mix laid out. If we listen to the MIDI file, you'll notice that there is no pan of the instruments, the bass is too loud for me, and it's lacking a realism you might hear in a live environment. Also, I think the piano accompaniment is way too loud. However, later on in the song, we do have a piano solo, and at that time, I'd like to bring the accompaniment back up to match that solo volume. To do that, we'll use the Record Mix Removes capability. I've gone ahead and listened to the song, and I've made some changes in our volume sliders, our pan, our chorus and our reverb levels for all of our MIDI tracks. Now that I've set these, we can start the song over again and you can listen to the difference. Can you hear the difference in the song? I certainly can. The bass isn't nearly as obnoxious as it was. The sound stage is spread out more so that it sounds more realistic. And the instruments have some reverb to them. When everything is correct, move the song position pointer to the beginning of the song. You now can press the insert button. This will create a snapshot of the mixer settings. We can save our file, and the next time that I open it and start the song, this is where the mixture settings will start out at. Next, starting at bar 39, I have a piano solo, and I'd like to bring the piano accompaniment up in volume. The solo ends at bar 71, and at that point, I'd like to return it to its previous value. Since I have the lead piano set to the volume I want it, I'll want to move the accompaniment fader up to match it, and then return it to its original location after the solo is over. To do this, we can scroll our window to bar 38. And click on the timeline ruler at bar 38. We gradually want to move the slider up over a period of time, in this case a bar, so it's not abrupt. Bring back the mixer window, and make sure that the channel strip that you want is the one that's selected. We can press the red record mixer moves button. And when we're done recording, we can press the stop button. Power Tracks will ask if you'd like to keep the recorded mixer moves. If you're satisfied with them, click yes. We now can scroll to bar 70. Again, click on our timeline ruler. Restore our mixer window. Channel Strip 5 is still selected, and we can press on the Record Mixer Moves button. And reduce the volume back to its original location. 
If we're happy with the recorded mixer moves, click on yes. This covers the basic mixer window, features of the window, and MIDI mixing. Thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I hope that I've been able to share some knowledge with you. In the next tutorial, we'll pick up where we've left off, and I'll show you the audio capabilities of the mixer in PowerTracks Pro Audio.